All right, and so what this video is going to show you is a breakdown of the nephron of the kidney and its three major functions. And so I'm going to start off by drawing the, the nephron and labeling the different parts of it. And then after we get all the different parts, I'll go through each one and describe their functions. So I'm going to draw. Circular structure, first of all, that would be the glomerulus. And then I'm going to make a curvy tube. All right, so that is my little sketch of the nephron. All right, and so I'm gonna start off in the left side here, and I'm gonna show a blood vessel coming in and wrapping around this glomerulus, and then a the blood vessel leaving. This blood vessel that is bringing blood in to the nephron is called the afferent arteriole. So this afferent, I think of afferent as the vessel that's bringing the blood to the glomerulus. So the blood is arriving to the glomerulus and this is blood that's gonna be filtered and then you have a blood vessel that's carrying the filtered blood away from the nephron or away from the glomerulus. And this blood vessel right here is called the efferent arteriole. So I think of again with the efferent, the E, I think of it as that's the blood exiting the glomerulus. So this is blood that's already been filtered. And what you have in between the two arterioles is a glomerulus. The glomerulus is the filter. So it's full of capillaries. This glomerulus is full of capillaries. This is a very unique capillary bed. What makes this capillary bed different from all other capillary beds, is that usually you see an arterial going to the capillary bed and a venule leaving. That means it dropped off oxygen, it dropped off nutrients, and it needs to get its way back up to the heart. That is not the case with this capillary bed. Oxygen is not being dropped off. The blood is only being filtered, it's being cleansed. And so because it still has oxygen, it's not gonna go directly back to the heart. So therefore, it's still called an arterial when it's leaving this capillary bed. So that's why we have two arterioles. We have an apron arterial that brings blood in. You have an apron arterial that takes blood out. And that blood that's being taken out, again, is cleansed blood. And what I mean by cleanse, the waste is removed from it. So what gets removed from, from the glomerulus here? Um, so a few things that's gonna get removed here and I'm gonna change the color. Saying, okay, so anything that gets removed from the blood is gonna start heading down the first little tube here. Let's talk about what kind of waste uh, gets removed here. So what gets eliminated? Most of what gets eliminated from blood is 
water, sugar, salt, metabolic waste. So those are most of the things that get filtered out. A few things that do not get filtered out would be uh, proteins. So I'm gonna show that that um, what sticks around here would be proteins, like blood proteins. They stay out. They 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 stay within the blood. They they do not get filtered out. That's why one of the tests that they look at is do you have albumin in your urine? Albumin is a blood protein. If you have albumin in your urine, that means proteins is getting past that filter where it shouldn't be passing through. So if you have albumin passing through there, that's a good sign that you have kidney damage. And so albumin does not get filtered out. Albumin and other blood proteins stay within the, the blood. What else does that go through are red blood cells and white blood cells. They don't get filtered out. And so those things stay within the blood along with some water, but most of the water, sugars, salt, and waste filters out, it gets removed from the bloodstream. This is the first process called filtration. So I'm gonna put that as number one, filtration. Filtering water, salt, sugar, and waste out of the blood. And this happens at the glomerulus. So after that, it enters into a part of the nephron called a proximal convoluted tubulo. I'm gonna just call it PCT, proximal convoluted tubulo. What does that mean? Well, proximal tells you where is it located. This tube is the closest to the glomerulus. That's why it's called proximal, because it's approximately close to the glomerulus. So that's a P part. Convoluted means curvy, and then T for tubulo. So it's a curvy tube close to the glomerulus. That's really what PCT or proximal convoluted tubulo means, curvy tube near the glomerulus. Now what happens here <clears throat> is a function called Absorption. Absorption. Sometimes it's called reabsorption. So I'm going to put that down on top here. Reabsorption. Absorption or reabsorption? What are we reabsorbing? What are we bringing back into the bloodstream? Well, what needs to go back in the bloodstream will be things that were initially removed that you want to keep. So if you look at the four things that's been filtered out, what do you want to keep? Well, you want to keep water. So you want to bring water back in. You want to bring salt back in. You want to bring sugars back in. But you don't want to bring waste back in. And so water, salt, sugars, most of that gets reabsorbed, brought back into the the bloodstream. So really when you look back and see what has been initially filtered out, you just want waste to be the one that stays in the tubules to be excreted out later on. So that's what happens in a proximal convoluted tubule. You're bringing these uh, three components back into the blood. Most of the water, like 90% of the water that's been filtered out is brought back in during that proximal convoluted tubule stage. Then you get down to this loop. This loop is called loop of Henle. Sometimes it's called a nephron loop. So I'm gonna put that down in the parentheses here, nephron loop or loop of Henle. So what's going on here, you have two different, two different parts of the loop of Henle. The first part goes with the absorption but it's reabsorption of water. So you have reabsorption of water there. On the other side, you have reabsorption
of salt. Okay, so we absorb some salt on one side, we absorb some water on the other side, but still doing the same thing that the proximal complex tubule is doing, bringing water and salt back into the bloodstream. You just have it split, its jobs in a little bit handy. Have you absorbed some water on one side, have you absorbed some salt on the other side? So, so it still continues on with that second function of reabsorption. Now we're getting to the next part. This is another curvy tube. Now this curvy tube is farther away from the glomerulus. So I'm gonna call this one distal convoluted tubulo. Curvy tube farther away from the glomerulus. Now what's going on here is a third function. The third function is called secretion. Secretion. What does secretion mean? Secretion means forcing things into the tubules that were not originally filtered out of the blood. So you have some things in your blood that do not get filtered out, but your body still wants to get rid of it. A lot of times these are very large, complex molecules. A lot of times these would be things like drugs in your system or toxins in your system. And so they do not initially get filtered. So after the first two stages, they are still found in your bloodstream, but your body wants to get rid of it. And so it's gonna use energy and force it out of the blood and put it into these tubules through the process of secretion. So um, I can put down, for example, uh, drugs is pushed into the tubules in this area right here, secretion. So forcing things out that did not get filtered out initially. That's what goes on in distal convoluted tubule. Then you have the collecting duct. So this is a collecting duct. What looks almost like a trunk of a tree. Now what are all these other branches I have on here will be other nephrons. So other nephrons like this nephron coming in. So a collecting duct can have tens of different nephrons coming in, connecting to it. And so what comes out will be the, the urine and it flows out from the nephron and collects right here. You have urine from that distal convoluted coming in. You have urine here, urine coming down here and here. So they're all, this is where all the urine is collected. That's why they call it collecting duct. And if it continues down the collecting duct, it's gonna eventually reach the renal pelvis of the, of the kidney which means it's gonna be on its way out because after the renal pelvis, it's gonna reach the, the ureter, which is gonna travel from the ureter down to the bladder to the urethra and out. So whatever is found in the collecting duct is pretty much on its way out. Now besides the collecting duct collecting urine, it has one other job to it, it has a special kind of reabsorption. So I'm gonna put on reabsorption again here. But I'm gonna put an asterisk next to it. This asterisk means that the collecting duct only reabsorbs if certain hormones are present. So I'm gonna say is hormonally regulated. So hormonally regulated. So collecting duct will only be absorbed if certain hormones are present. So some examples of hormones that need to be present for a collecting duct to reabsorb things. One would be ADH. ADH is a hormone that's secreted by your pituitary gland and it is secreted when you are dehydrated. And so when your body releases ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone, it's gonna do the opposite of a diuretic. A diuretic makes you urinate a lot of water. An antidiuretic hormone makes you not urinate water. So ADH is released when you're dehydrated. It's your body's way of conserving the water. So when ADH is released, the collecting duct is gonna take that as a signal to absorb more water than usual. And when it absorbs way more water, more than what the 
proximal convoluted tubule has reabsorbed. Now you're talking about far less urine being produced and your urine can be concentrated, extremely concentrated, because you stripped out quite a bit of water from it. And that's exactly what happens when someone's dehydrated. When someone's dehydrated, they're gonna urinate less often. And when they do urinate, it's gonna be really concentrated urine, like really dark yellow urine. That means the water has been stripped away because you're dehydrated. You want to not waste the water. You don't want to get rid of the water. You want to keep that water within. So again, a collecting duct only does that when ADH is present. Another hormone that regulates when collecting ducts reabsorb things would be, um, would go with, uh, with salt. So that would be the whole um, renin and aldosterone. Renin and aldosterone are two major hormones that are released by the kidney that says that we should reabsorb more salt than normal. This would happen if your blood pressure is too low. If your blood pressure is too low, you do not want to get rid of salt. You want to keep salt because it's salt that makes your blood pressure go up. And so if your body feels like your blood pressure is too low, it's going to release renin, it's going to release aldosterone. And when those two hormones are released, the collecting duct is going to reabsorb more salt than normal, and therefore your urine is not going to have that much salt. It's going to be more of a um, dilute uh, urine. All right, and um, if those hormones are not released, then your urine will come out um, with more water, and it will only give it a salt if you have an overabundance of salt. Then you'll find that with your um, concentration of your urine. And so those, that's the function of collecting duct there. So again, the three main functions is a filtration, which occurs in the glomerulus, reabsorption, which occurs in the proximal convoluted tubulo, the loop of Henle, and a collecting duct if there's hormones present. And the third function is secretion, which occurs in the distal convoluted tubulo, and that's where you're forcing things out of the blood that did not recently get filtered. So very large chemicals or molecules like drugs usually are pushed out of your blood in that area there. All right, so this is a good breakdown of the, of the nephron for you. It helps you figure out what are the different parts of the nephron and the three main functions. So um, look over this video uh, several more times to help it stick to you and let me know if you have any other questions. Okay.